Hey everybody, HMV here. Start a new series. Uh, it's probably going to be a fairly short one, but um, with the problems I had in my other career and I just want to murder everything in the world, uh, I've decided to, uh, to start a challenge instead. And this is the Caveman Challenge. There'll be a link to it on the YouTube page. So if you want to try it yourself, go ahead and try it. The idea is, let's go ahead and start. You'll notice that I am, uh, other than my flag, everything is normal on here. It's just a regular, normal game. Also, you'll notice there are no mods installed. That is correct. I am playing this game modless. I do have Blizzy's ambient light adjustment installed, but uh, I, I asked for permission for that, and I was told by Slashy, who was running this thing, that it eh, that's okay. Um, first and foremost, we have zero science. We have two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, we can't even man. accept any contracts because uh, you just get them, don't you? Yeah, you just get these. You don't have to accept these. Actually, no, you don't get these. We have to actually take these. So yeah, I took the I took the right two ones. So I've accepted my my two contracts, the launch our first vessel and gather scientific data from Carbon, because we're gonna need as much money as possible to get this thing off the ground. Um, and we have no science, so let's go ahead and gather some from around Kerbal Space Center. This is pretty simple to do. It doesn't matter who we take right now because if you look here, um, if we try to send Bob our scientist. Uh, actually, let's go to the astronaut complex. Um, if we see what Bob has, um, vessel science return and part science return is currently 100% on him. So until we can get him leveled up, he's the same as everybody else. So we might as well take the benefit uh, of our pilots and actually have Jeb and Val running the show. Let's go ahead and put Val in. She gets to be the first one to do anything. Um, and there's and anything is pretty much nothing. <laughs> uh, we can uh, put some science on this thing. Go ahead and put two goo, goo canisters on here. And this is it. This is all we're going to do. We're not even going to name this thing. Let's go ahead and send Val out there. And she has an extremely easy job. She's going to observe this goo. She's going to observe this goo. We're going to keep these. She's going to take a crew report. She's going to hop on out of the capsule here. She's going to take that crew report out, although it doesn't really matter. She's going to take an EVA report. And notice she's flying. And then we're going to store that in here. And then she's gonna hop on the ground, take another EVA report, walking, <laughs> and then we're gonna recover her. And we got 23 science for that. Not bad for five seconds worth of work here. Um, we're gonna also do the same thing with the space plane hangar. And thankfully we can load a ship from the VABU now. Of course it'll be on its side, and it's also way up in the air. And we're gonna do the exact same thing we did before, which is take these readings. Jeb is going to hop out now. Now I believe this is, this flying, we don't get anything anymore for it. Because flying is just flying at Kerbin Shores, which we're going to be anywhere in Kerbal Space Center. So we're just going to take this. So we're not getting quite as much science as we got before. But we're getting some. 7.6 science earned. We've got 30 now. We can start unlocking things. And there are critical things to unlock. Um, first of all, we want probe cores because I want to be able to um I want to be able to control my ship with only Bob at the controls because Bob's gonna be doing most of the work here. Because he's going to, once we can get him into orbit, he's gonna start getting us um orbital data. And I can get him into orbit without SAS, but why would you want to? Um, one of the reasons you want to is this is very expensive. <laughs> um, so we, his first orbit might actually uh, not be that. Uh, we also want decouplers. I mean, those are obvious. We also want um, engines that actually work. And then I think we're also going to take this bigger fuel tank. If we want to get into orbit, we kind of need that fuel tank. Um, this one here, we just need so many of them that it'll end up being wobbly. Um, the fins we don't really need. Um, all this stuff we don't need. I think what we're going to do here is we're going to research this, and then we are going to close this. We've completed this. Um, and one thing that's important to note is that while I am playing a normal mode, um, and, and it's it was said that you can't change any options, one of those options that I can't change is whether or not I can revert. And therefore, uh, I will freely revert as much as I want. Um, okay, so we can only accept one contract because we haven't launched our first vessel yet. Uh, so we're going to accept the Escape the Atmosphere contract. And now we're going to design our orbiter. And that pretty much means, yes, I have decided to... Uh, oops, there we go. I have decided to um, forego probe coring, at least to get into space, just because it's so expensive. 
Um, and this is a this is a joyride. We are not uh, we're not going to bring up any science. Uh, let's go ahead and bring the swivel. Might as well have the freedom here. And uh, the problem is this thing's going to get really back heavy. So this might not work. But that's what that's what happens here. Uh, I'm not using Kerbal Engineer. I have no idea how much fuel, how much Delta V this guy has, but this should be enough to get us into orbit. Um, considering that we don't need 4,500, we only need 3,300 or so. So let's go ahead and call this orbit. <laughs> oh wait, oh you can't put question marks. Oh man. Okay, fine. We'll call it orbit one. Let's go ahead and launch this guy. Um, we want Bill at the controls. Or, I'm sorry, Bob at the controls, our scientist. Let's go ahead and save and a launch. Oh, that's going to drive me nuts. <laughs> not being able to hit, uh, I guess I can hit Z, uh, but not having um, this at full to launch. That's going to, that's going to be, that's going to be enjoyable. We'll just say that. Um, not having Kerbal Engineer, you don't, you're not able to always tell certain things about your ship. One way to get around that is thrust away here. You see, I've got, uh, right now I'm at, I'm at 1G because we're sitting on the surface. But as soon as I hit the space bar, you can tell our thrust away is about 1.5 because one of them is overcoming Kerbin, and the other one is doing this. Another thing that you don't have, whoa, <laughs> in, uh, in this is a very good apoapsis reading. And there's that, there's nothing I can do about it. But once we get going here, you notice we are following the, we are following the prograde curve. And our apoapsis is about four. We're a little bit lower than I want to be. So maybe I wanted to tap over. Yeah, I wanted to tap over maybe at uh, maybe at 100 meters instead of 50 meters. But we're doing pretty good here. Things are looking pretty good. Without SAS, the, the fins are, are keeping it quite well. We are, uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely too low, though. But we'll see what happens. We're actually looking for very good. We're just making all these world's first records, which means we're making a ton of money. Our apoapsis is going up. Uh, let's bring this up so we know how much fuel we have left. When our apoapsis gets up to about 80, I'm going to cut the engines. I think we're going to make it. As long as nothing burns off. Uh, let's make it 85. 87. Yeah, we're barely losing any altitude. <laughs> hey, Bob, uh, do a crew report. Uh, this is the only crew report we're going to get, uh, except for wherever we land. So go ahead and take it. 4.5 science. Let's go ahead and keep this because we're going to get into orbit eventually anyway. Um, oh, yeah, we're going to be fine. Let's go ahead and crank this up. Get ourselves out of the atmosphere. Yeah, one thing about this challenge is we're never going to be taking EVA reports in space. We're also never going to be able to collect our data um, in space. So we have to bring everything that we're going to be... Um, we're gonna have to bring anything that we're going to, uh, let's go ahead and, here's where it's gonna be fun, to watch the nav ball and my orbit and my fuel. Oh wait, one thing I wanna do, before anything happens, we need to go back to the Space Center because I do not wanna lose this contract. Orbit Kerbin. Uh, accept that, and now do we have a? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna cancel contracts until we get a uh, science data from space around Kerbin. I'll tell you, I am wishing for that mod that allows you to hit X or A to accept your contracts or decline. There are a lot of tourist contracts. This is crazy. I guess that's all you get in the low levels. Okay, I'm at the point now where I don't care. Okay, I'm giving up. This is uh, this is boring, and one of the one of the reasons I oh my god we had 19 contracts. All 
Uh, but we did accept the, the orbit curving contract. So let's go back to our ship. Okay. Let's go to map mode here. Let's bring our thing up because we need to make sure that we keep some fuel, and we did. We got 88 by 79. We are in orbit. And we just got our orbit curbing contract complete, which is awesome. Um, now all we got to do is get Bill home. And what we're going to do here is he's already aiming retrograde. We're going to let him flip around. Uh, we'll flip him around. What we're going to do here is we're going to abuse the time warp bug. We're going to get him going roughly prograde. And we're going to do a half orbit. I don't think Blizzy's uh, ambient light adjustment works without the toolbar. I was hoping that the config file would, <laughs> would be there. So I'm going to have to ask if the uh, toolbar is OK as well. OK, now the sun has just risen. Now I'm going to burn my periapsis down. And I don't want it to be too low. I'm thinking 50. <laughs> I'm going to be super conservative here. Uh, another thing we can do here is, because we're playing uh, normal mode, we can hit F5 to save and not feel bad about it. So we're going to ditch our, we're going to ditch the rest of our fuel. And then we're going to bring ourselves down. And ideally, we are going to be aerodynamically stable backwards. Looks like we are. And now the, the key here is, as anybody who watched uh, the last Squadcast knows, is to um, not hit the parachute until you're going under 250 meters per second. And also, if you don't know this, you can actually see safe to deploy, unsafe. Um, I don't know why they did it this way and not just not let you deploy the parachutes. Um, I would prefer to be able to hit the space bar right now and have it say, no, I'm not going to deploy the chute. But I don't get a say. We actually might make it all the way back to Kerbal Continent, which would be kind of cool. Uh, but we're starting to see the flames. Okay, it's not just a might. We're going we're gonna to see Kerbal Continent. Now I'm thinking we might pass Kerbal Continent. <laughs> It'd be cool if we landed at the island runway. Okay, our parachute is pitch black, but it's not because it's been burned beyond all recognition. Sadly, it looks like we're going to fly right over the island runway as well as Kerbal Space Center. That would be cool if we landed right on the island, but oh well. Got our heat warning here, but I think we're going to be fine. My biggest concern is whether or not we're going to get below uh, 250 meters per second when we hit the chute, but it looks like we'll be fine. And bam, there we go. We'll go down to about four grand, three grand. Oh, I'm in time warp. <laughs> I don't know how safe time warping is, uh, but there we go, Bob. You ideally have now leveled up. Um, we cannot take a crew report because we took one in space. Okay, now do an EVA. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and take an EVA report with your neck broken. Now take the crew report out of here. Uh, I don't think we're gonna be able to, uh, I do not think we're gonna be able to get back in the ship. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I don't think he can get back in the ship because the the pod is facing down. I screwed that up. Okay, well we'll get a crew report from in the water later. Let's go ahead and recover him and his vessel. And we are we're basically rich now. Uh, we have uh, six hundred eighteen grand because we got all those contracts. You just get like massive contracts when once you once you get to orbit, you're good. Um, now we need to start. Um, Really, really working on uh, things like landing on the moon and things like that. We're gonna, we're gonna really rush this. Um, and if you look here, Bob, I, why am I going to the wrong building? Because I never click on these buildings. That's why. Bob is now a level one, which is awesome. That means we get five percent more uh, <laughs> uh, science return. This is why Bob is going to be doing most of these things. Um, and this is it for this episode. Um, I am going to fast track. Um, 
certain things. I'm going to fast track aviation for a reason that that might not be obvious right now. Uh, I'm going to fast track this probe core because while I can orbit, I'm sorry, not this probe core, this probe core. Because while I can orbit with Bob, I am not going to fly to the moon with Bob. I'm sorry. That's just the way it works. Um, so I think what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to fast track aviation here uh, so that we can get wheels. Um, and then uh, with a little jet-powered uh, rocket a car, basically, a jet-powered rocket car, um, we can drive around Kerbal Space Center and very easily pick up all the science around Kerbal Space Center. That's, that's my next goal. Uh, then we should be able to get this probe core. And then the goal after that is to... Um, Fly to the moon uh, with Bob and his probe core. So I uh, hope you're looking forward to that. I'm definitely looking forward to doing it. I'm HMD and I will, as always, talk at you later.